Hey parents, while you're joining us live for your normal church service today, there will also be a link provided for Bond Kids to join in on their normal Bond Kids service. And if you have an extra device, log them into Facebook and they can find the link there. And if you're in the Bond Kids group, the link will be posted there. And if you are not, the link will also be on our church Facebook page. If you will scroll down, you can find it there. Hey guys, if you have a middle school, high school age student who wants to join us in our youth group services, please leave your email down in the comments or message our Facebook page so they can join us Wednesday nights at 7 for our virtual student discipleship program. Hey church, I uh, want to welcome you to our uh, online worship experience this weekend. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, you know the church is not a building, uh, it's a people. Uh, and this week, the church has left the building. Uh, we're gathered in homes all over uh, Jackson County and the counties around here, and uh, we're still the church. We're still part of God's family, and so don't think that the church is closed. The church is still alive and well and happening today. Uh, some people have been asking about uh, ways you can give, and there's a few ways you can do that. Uh, we have our online uh, giving available you can go to bombbaptist.com forward slash give uh, you can also text to give that number is 606-268-6404 uh, um, there's also a couple more ways you can give you can send your uh, gift to p.o box 520 anvil kentucky 40402 or you can drop it off by the church we've installed a drop box there on the front of the church and you can uh, drop your drop your gift off there so uh, thanks, and I hope you enjoy our time together today. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone today. It's Lord's Day. Our first hymn this morning is going to be Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. God, praise God, praise God. 
praise God, 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 praise God. Good morning, Vaughn. We'd like to welcome you this morning to our worship service and uh, sing along with us and pretend that you're sitting here with us right now.
Hey church, um, I'm glad to be back with you again. Uh, I'm looking forward to the time when we get together in person. We get to see each other in person again and have our regular Sunday morning services. But until that time, I'm thankful that we have this way that we can gather together and still gather around God's Word. Um, this week, we were supposed to go and finish up the Beatitudes, uh, but we're going to put that off for a few more weeks. And the Lord has l just laid something on my heart this week that I want to share with you. Uh, I want us to take a few minutes and talk about prayer. Um, and to be honest with you, this won't be a sermon on prayer as much it is, as it is a call to prayer. Uh, I believe that one of the major downfalls of the American church today is our lack of an emphasis on prayer. Uh, we just don't have much focus on prayer in our lives or even in our services. Sometimes we use prayer at the beginning of our services or we uh, pray at the end of our services or to feel an awkward silence between a song and uh, another song or, or a sermon or something like that. But prayer should be much more than that. And I feel that the reason that there's not much emphasis on prayer in our services, not just in our church, but in churches all over America, is because we don't have an emphasis on prayer in our personal lives. We just have neglected to be a people of prayer. Uh, it's almost like an afterthought in our churches and in our lives today. Uh, it seems like for many of us that we pray when we're in trouble or we pray when something has just gone horribly wrong, but other than that, our lives are, for the most part, prayerless. And even as I examine my own life, I've gone through um, periods that are longer than I would want to admit of just only praying when I really needed something, praying when something had fell apart. But I honestly believe that prayer is the most important thing that we can be doing as a church. Um, you know, we do a lot of good things here at Bomb Baptist Church. We uh, have our Sunday morning services. We teach the Bible. We have Sunday school. We have Bond Kids. We have great music. We have a great youth program. We serve our community. We give to missions. And yet, honestly... I believe that prayer is more important than all of these other things. Our church is called to teach and preach the Bible, and yet if this preaching and teaching of the Bible is not bathed in prayer, then it, it may be ineffective. Our kids need things like bond kids where they get to hear and and understand the gospel and the Bible on their level, and yet what our kids need from us more than that is for us to pray for them. Our youth on Wednesday night, they need, to, they need to be taught the Bible and they need to be discipled, and yet the thing that we can do that's more important than that is to pray for them. We need to worship God in song. We need to be led in worship. And yet what we need more than songs to be sung is for us to be a people of prayer. Our community needs us to be a present help. Our community needs us to serve them and to love them like Christ, to share the gospel. And yet... More than our community needs us to love and to serve them, they need us to pray for them first. Our missionaries around the world need our financial support, but more than they need our financial support, they need us to pray. Prayer is the difference between 
what you and I can do in our own strength and power and what God can do through His limitless strength and power. You know, the older I get, the longer that I'm a pastor, I realize that there's less and less that I can actually do on my own. I'm realizing more and more each day that I need God, and because I need God and I need His power in my life, I need to pray. Prayer is us calling on God. It's calling in the heavy artillery. It's asking God to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. You know, I'm weak and helpless apart from God. I need God's power in my life, and so I need to pray. I believe that if there's ever been a time that God's people should pray, if there's ever been a time for us to cry out to God and to hit our knees, it's now. I think that we all would agree that prayer is a good thing. I believe that we would all agree that prayer is something that we should be doing, but sadly we would probably all agree that it's something that we don't do enough. Let's be a people who have prioritized prayer. Not just in concept, but let's pray. Let's be a people who go to God in prayer. You know, as I look through the Bible, I I see that in times of great trial or great pressure, that God's people have gone to Him in prayer. God's people hit their knees when times get tough and guys, times are tough. It's time for us to pray. Just a couple of examples. In 1 Kings 19, the king of Assyria has laid siege to Jerusalem. King Hezekiah doesn't know what to do. It looks like that the Assyrians will surely overcome them, that they will prevail in the battle. They're far outnumbered. And yet... God shows up because Hezekiah cries out to God. He calls for the people to pray. And as they pray, and as King Hezekiah prays that night, God hears their prayers. He sends the angel of the Lord and lays waste to 85,000 enemy soldiers. Jerusalem is saved The battle is won, not by swords, not by military might, but by the prayer of God's people. In the book of Esther, a wicked man named Haman had set out a plot against the Jews that they would be destroyed, that they would be, uh, everyone would be destroyed in that land. And yet, Esther, a Jew, had been chosen as queen. God had placed her there for a specific reason, for a specific time. Queen Esther is going to go into the king and and try to, to intercede on behalf of the Jewish people. And yet before she does that, she calls all of the Jews of the land to pray and fast for three days before she'll go talk to the king. And through that prayer, God delivered His people. In the New Testament, on the day of Pentecost, we see that the 120 disciples at that time, do you know what they were doing when the Holy Spirit came? They had gathered together in one accord and were praying together. In Acts chapter 4, Peter and John had been arrested and they had been put on trial for preaching the gospel. And they were commanded by the the council there in Jerusalem uh, to never preach the gospel again or to face severe consequences. And you know what they do? As soon as they were released, they went and found the other believers and they began to pray. And here's what it says in Acts 4.31. And when they had prayed, the place 
in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the Word of God with boldness. We need to be shook as a church in America today. We need God to shake us to our core, to show us that we need Him, to, that we would call on Him, that we would rely on Him. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit that we might be continue to speak the Word with boldness in every situation. But it begins with prayer. In Acts 12, Peter had been imprisoned. And in the middle of the night, the angel of the Lord breaks out Peter. He, he brings him out of the jailhouse and Peter goes to the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark. And do you know what's happening when he gets to that house? They're in an all-night prayer meeting. They're praying. They're calling out to, Lord, to the Lord. Now don't you know that that has something to do with the angel of the Lord showing up for Peter in the middle of the night? Things happen when God's people begin to pray. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas were in prison. They were in a Philippian jail. And do you know what they were doing in the midnight hour? They were praising God through hymns and praying. When God's people come under pressure, they pray. They seek God's face. They pursue Him in prayer. They go to their knees. And that's where we need to be found today. If we're not known for anything else as a church, may we be known as a church that will pray. A church that is seeking God's face in prayer. May we be known as a church on our knees because I believe that we're strongest when we pray. You know, I hear some people say sometimes that all we can do now is pray. Like that that's the last resort. Like that it's the Hail Mary. But I don't think that should ever be our attitude. I think we should say all we need to do is pray. If I can just get a word to heaven, if I can just, if I can just get a word in the ear of God, I know my Heavenly Father will work it out. Prayer ought to be our first response rather than our last resort. Corey Ten Boom said, is, your, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? May prayer be our steering wheel, the thing that guides and directs our lives. Let's pray like God will hear us. Let's pray like we believe that God will move when His people pray. Let's pray like we believe that revival may just be on the other side of one more prayer. Let's pray like we believe that the goal of prayer is not an answer but a, a relationship. See, I think sometimes we get discouraged in prayer because we don't see something happening immediately. We don't pray because we don't feel like we're getting an answer from God. But friend, I want you to see today that the goal of prayer is not to get an answer from God but to get more of God. See, when we pray, we get close to our Heavenly Father, and it's in that proximity that prayer begins to change us. It doesn't... Prayer, the goal of prayer is not that we would get something from God, but it's that we would get more of God. And as we get closer to God, we get exactly what we need. We pray to get closer to to our Heavenly Father. We pray because we know that God is sovereign and that when we pray, we know that, that God is going to move on our behalf. We pray because we trust His hand. We trust that when we bring things to Him, that He'll do what's best for us. See, we get caught up in the answers to our prayers, but I want you to see that God is delighted in the heartfelt prayers of His people. God's not so concerned about how we pray or what we sound like when we pray. 
but that we're genuine, that we're heartfelt when we pray. God is delighted when we pray. God, all He is concerned about is that we're genuine, that we want to spend time with Him, not just that we want something from His hand, but we want to be close to Him as our Father. Proverbs 15, 8 says, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is His delight. I believe that in the middle of this pandemic, God is calling you and I to prayer. What better time have we ever had to pray than now? We don't have all the distractions that we normally have. Uh, the, the sports are closed down. The schools are closed down. Uh, the restaurants are closed down. Why don't we prioritize prayer in this time? Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. It's time as God's people that we humble ourselves before God, that we turn from our wicked ways, and pray and seek God's face like we never have before. When we do this, I believe that we're going to see God move in our lives and in the life of our church. I believe that if we would commit ourselves to prayer, we would see revival in our churches. We would see loved ones come to faith in Christ. I believe we could see the church houses full. I believe we could see the gospel go forward into our community like that we never have before. I believe we could see marriages restored. I believe we could see addictions broken. I believe that we could see things that we could have only dreamed of, and yet I believe that it begins with the people of God hitting their knees in prayer. Prayer is the most important thing that we can be doing as a church. As born-again believers, it, it is all of our responsibilities to pray. The beautiful thing about prayer is that you don't have to be a preacher or a deacon. Uh, you don't have to be an officer in the church to pray. Every single person from the oldest to the youngest, whether you're in the nursing home or the nursery, uh, you can call on the name of the Lord. You can pray. You can call on the Lord to move. You know, right now we can't meet together in uh, one building. We can't come to church on Sunday morning like we normally do. But do you know what we can do? We can stand united in prayer. We can pray like we've never prayed before. We can seek God's face in this season. We can pray for our fellow church members. We can pray for revival in our church. We can pray for the lost in our community. We can pray for our leaders. Pray for our missionaries. Pray for the sick and afflicted. Pray for the anxious and depressed. Pray for the widow and the orphan. Pray for me and the other leaders of this church that we would have the wisdom to navigate these difficult days. May we be a people who pray and pray often. The verse that we just read was 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. It's a call for God's people to pray. So here's what I want to challenge you to do. Right now, pull out your phone and set an alarm for 7.14 a.m. and p.m. When those alarms go off, no matter what you're doing, go and pray. Find a spot. If you're, if you're alone, just get right down on your knees and begin to pray. If you're around your family, grab their hands and go and find a place you can kneel as a family and begin to pray. Seek out His face. Cry out to our Heavenly Father. Don't ignore it or put it off. Listen, guys, I already know what the enemy's going to do. He's going to get you right in the middle of something important at 7.14 every evening or 7.14 in the morning. He's going to try to distract you and keep you from doing this. But whatever you're doing, no matter how important it seems, when 7.14 comes, would you pray? Don't put it off. Don't ignore it. The enemy is going 
to try to distract you. He's going to try to keep you from prayer because he knows the power of prayer. He, he wants to distract us as God's people and keep us from prayer because he knows what might happen if we would commit to pray. And so whatever's happening at 7.14 at a.m. and p.m., stop and pray. You know, in the mornings I've got in a bad habit that I pick up my phone and I read my messages or my email or I'll look at Facebook first thing in the morning. But guys, let's, let's stop that. Instead of pulling our phone out and looking at all that in the morning, why don't we roll out of our beds and hit our knees and begin to pray and ask for God to do a work among us. I believe that we can seek God's face. We can take our Heavenly Father at His Word. Let's cry out to Him and see what He'll do. I believe He'll heal our land. I believe He can heal our church. I believe He can heal us today. Let's seek His face in prayer and see what He will do. You know, I never want to close our time out together without sharing the good news of the gospel. You know, the reason that we can pray, the reason that we can seek God's face, the reason we can approach His throne boldly is because we don't approach on our own merit, on our own righteousness, but we approach because of what Jesus has done for us. Jesus, by living a perfect life and dying on the cross, raising again on the third day, He made a way for us to not only have our sins forgiven, but have a good and a right relationship with God. He made a way for us to be adopted into God's family, that if we would repent of our sins and believe that Jesus is the only way to the Father, believe that, that Jesus will pay for our sins, then He will. He'll pay for our sins, He'll adopt us into His family, and He'll redeem us. From our sinful ways, we'll be born again into the family of God when we repent of our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Thanks, guys, for tuning in today. I hope that you and your family will commit to pray in these days ahead. Thanks, and I love you guys. Hey, thanks for joining us live this week. And if your kids have not got a chance to access their service for this week, they can follow the link provided on the church Facebook page. After they get done watching, you can also take them to bombbaptist.com forward slash kids. And there's an activity sheet for the older students and the younger students. And once they have completed them this week, share in the comments below. Hey church, thanks for tuning in today. We're glad uh, that you came by and worshiped with us. Uh, we want you to know that if uh, you have any questions about today's sermon or Jesus or the Bible, uh, you can send those in uh, to the church's Facebook page. Just send us a direct message and we'll get back to you. We'd love to have a conversation with you about Jesus. Uh, for more resources, you can go to bombbaptist.com and check some more stuff out. Uh, we'd love for you to go there. Love you guys and we'll see you next week.